Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is DC source conversion. Our objective is to introduce a circuit analysis technique known as source conversion, whereby a DC current source in parallel to fixed resistance is substituted for an equivalent DC voltage source in series of the fixed resistance and vice versa. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewers watch the DC current sources lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only didn't recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, this lecture is predicated upon the belief the viewers marginally skilled in basic series and basic parallel DC circuit analysis, including the use of both the DC voltage divider rule and DC current divider rule. Source conversion is a very easy circuit analysis technique that allows one to exchange a DC current source in parallel with fixed resistance for an equivalent DC voltage source in series with a fixed resistance without otherwise affecting circuit behavior. This technique also works in reverse. Source conversion also allows one to exchange a DC voltage source in series with a fixed resistance for an equivalent DC current source in parallel with a fixed resistance without otherwise affecting circuit behavior. The key qualifier to the above substitutions is equivalency. If the different source configurations are indeed equivalent, the variable load resistance will be unaware that the source conversion has occurred and will continue to operate as previously. Source conversion allows a degree of flexibility in circuit analysis scenarios by allowing one to employ circuit-circuit analysis methods in preference to others. Sometimes you want to use the voltage divider rule. Sometimes you want to use the current divider rule. Source conversion allows you this degree of flexibility. Let's first deal with converting a DC current source in parallel with fixed resistance to an equivalent DC voltage source in series with a fixed resistance. Consider a 400 mA current source in parallel with this fixed 60 ohm resistance in parallel with a variable load resistance. We should be able to swap out this parallel combination for an equivalent DC voltage source in series with the fixed resistance and the variable load resistor should be none the wiser to the substitution. We need to solve for two properties, one the voltage magnitude and two the resistance value for the alternate source configuration. The value of the equivalent fixed series resistance you'll be happy to know is the exact value of the fixed parallel resistance, only the position changes. Now we need to remove the variable load resistor and isolate the DC current source and the fixed parallel resistance. To determine the value of the equivalent voltage source, one must solve for the open circuit voltage. With the load resistance removed, the open circuit voltage will be the voltage across the parallel resistance with all current traveling through it. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates that this is a value of 24 volts. Our equivalent source configuration is therefore a 24 volt fixed voltage source in series of the fixed resistance of 60 ohms. If everything I've said is true, these two different source configurations will induce the same voltage drop across and the same current through for a range of variable load resistors. Let's say we set the variable load resistor to 120 ohms. Our original configuration is a perfect setup for the DC current divider rule. We know incoming current and we know both resistances in a parallel combination of two elements. An application of the DC current divider rule demonstrates current through the variable load resistor will be 133.3 mA. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates voltage across the variable load resistor will be 16 volts. Our substitute configuration is a perfect setup for the DC voltage divider rule. With the load resistor set to 120 ohms, we know applied voltage and we know both resistances in a series combination of two elements. An application of the DC voltage divider rule demonstrates voltage across the variable load resistor will be 16 volts. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load resistor will be 133.3 mA. Equivalency has been maintained and the load resistance is none the wiser that the original current source in parallel with a fixed resistance has been swapped out for a voltage source in series with a fixed resistance. Note when performing source conversion, it's important to maintain original polarity. Notice that the voltage source positive terminal is pointing up, as is the current source's directional arrow. By respecting polarity and direction, this ensures that the variable load resistance experiences the same direction of current flow for both configurations. Let's try the reverse operation and learn to convert a DC voltage source in series with a fixed resistance to an equivalent DC current source in parallel with a fixed resistance. Consider a 72 volt source in series with a 750 ohm fixed resistor in series with a variable load resistor. We should be able to swap this out for an equivalent DC current source in parallel with a fixed resistance and a variable load resistor should be none the wiser to the substitution. We need to solve for two properties. One, the current magnitude and the resistance value of the alternate source configuration. The value of the equivalent fixed parallel resistance, you'll be happy to know, is the exact same value of the fixed series resistance, only the position changes. To determine the value of the equivalent current source, one must remove the variable load resistor and place a low resistance short circuit across the terminals of interest. 
with a low resistance short circuit placed across the load terminals, the source sees only the series resistance of the fixed resistor. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates that this is a value of 96 milliampers. Our equivalent source configuration is therefore a 96 milliampere current source in parallel with a fixed resistance of 750 ohms. If everything I've been saying is true, these two different source configurations will induce the same voltage drop across and current through for variable load resistances. Let's say we set the variable load resistor to 480 ohms. Our original configuration is a perfect setup for the DC voltage divider rule. We know applied voltage and we know both resistances in a series combination of two elements. An application of the DC voltage divider rule demonstrates the voltage across the variable load resistor set at 480 ohms is roughly 28.1 volts. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load resistor at 480 ohms would be 58.5 milliampers. Our modified configuration is a perfect setup for the DC current divider rule. We know incoming current and we know both resistances in a parallel combination of two elements. An application of the DC current divider rule demonstrates current through the variable load resistor set at 480 ohms would be 58.5 milliampers. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates voltage across the variable load resistor will be 28.1 volts. Equivalency has indeed been maintained the load resistance is none the wiser that the original voltage source in series of the fixed resistance has been swapped out for a current source in parallel with a fixed resistance. Again, note when performing source conversion, it's important to maintain original polarity. Note that the voltage source positive terminal is pointing up, as is the current source's directional arrow. By respecting polarity and direction, this ensures that the variable load resistance experiences the same direction of current flow for both configurations. There's really not a lot more I can say about source conversion other than this. Pause the lecture and take a shot at converting these sources to their other world equivalents. If it's a voltage source in series with a fixed resistance, swap it out for an equivalent current source in parallel with a fixed resistance. On the other hand, if it's a current source in parallel with a fixed resistance, change it to an equivalent voltage source in series with a fixed resistance. Ensure equivalency is maintained by solving for voltage across and current through the load in both configurations. Let's say for the first circuit, the load resistor is 500 ohms. Let's say for the second circuit, the load resistor is 800 ohms. Ideally, both configurations will induce the same voltage drop and current through the given load resistance. Again, make sure polarity is accounted for such that either source configuration induces current through the load resistance in the same direction. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Our first illustrated example features a 70 milliampere current source in parallel with a 190 ohm resistor in parallel with a variable load resistor. With a variable load resistance removed, an application of Ohm's law demonstrates the open circuit voltage will be 13.3 volts. Therefore, a 13.3 volt voltage source in series with a fixed 190 ohm resistor should behave identically to our original configuration. As proof of this equivalency, our original configuration is a perfect setup for the DC current divider rule. With the load resistor set at 500 ohms, we know incoming current and we know both resistances in a parallel combination of two elements. An application of the DC current divider rule demonstrates current through the variable load resistor set at 500 ohms will be 19.3 milliampers. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates voltage across the variable load resistor will be 9.6 volts. A modified configuration is a perfect setup for the DC voltage divider rule. With the load resistor set at 500 ohms, we know applied voltage and we know both resistances in a series combination of two elements. An application of the DC voltage divider rule demonstrates voltage across the variable load resistor will be 9.6 volts. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the variable load resistor will be 19.3 milliampers. Our second illustrated example features a 48 volt source in series of the fixed 250 ohm resistor in series of the variable load resistor. With a variable load resistor removed and a short circuit put in its place, an application of Ohm's law demonstrates that the short circuit current will be 192 milliampers. Therefore, a 192 milliampere current source in parallel with a fixed 250 ohm resistor should behave identically. As proof of this equivalency, with load resistor set at 800 ohms, our original configuration is a perfect setup for the DC voltage divider rule. We know applied voltage and we know both resistances in a series combination of two elements. An application of the DC voltage divider rule demonstrates voltage across the variable load resistor set at 800 ohms is 36.6 volts. A subsequent application of DC ohms law demonstrates current through the variable load resistor will be 45.7 milliampers. Our modified configuration is a perfect setup for the DC current divider rule. We know incoming current, we know both resistances in a parallel combination of two elements. An application of the DC current divider rule demonstrates current through the variable load resistor will be 45.7 milliampers. Subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates voltage across the variable load resistor will be 36.6 volts. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence, our answers are correct. Alright, that's about it for now. 
will make use of source conversion in later circuit analysis scenarios. It's a simple and effective means of making circuits easier to visualize and analyze. If you overwhelmingly prefer the voltage divider rule to the current divider rule, or vice versa, you have my permission to do a source conversion and make it happen using whichever techniques you prefer. Either configuration should yield identical results. In conclusion, this lecture presented circuit analysis technique known as source conversion. Source conversion allows a degree of flexibility in circuit analysis scenarios and allows one to employ certain circuit analysis methods in preference to others. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.